Each time you tune into the Academy's uh, webinar series, you will hear more about what sets our graduate program apart from other programs. As always, even though that you'll be hearing us from a distance uh, today, you are very welcome to visit us and certainly to call us directly. So we'll leave Ron's video and introduce ourselves. As I mentioned, we're at a distance. We're um, sitting in Michigan, and you're sitting all around the country and maybe all around the world. But we'd like you to know who's behind the two voices that you'll be hearing on the webinar today. We are Sarah Turner. I'm Sarah Turner, and I am the Dean at the Academy. I'm on the right-hand side of your screen. And I am joined by Tricia Holt, who will introduce herself in just a moment. Tricia is our Academic co Programs Coordinator on the left-hand side of your screen. And perhaps we met at one of the portfolio review events this fall. I hope so, or we'll see you when you come to visit campus. Like last time, while we won't go over the material in our yellow book seen here, it's always a good guide to the Academy. So if you haven't received one from us, please request one online at the end of the presentation and we'll mail it to you. Last month, we gave you an overview of Cranbrook, telling you about our structure, campus life, approach, and legacy. If you missed that webinar, it is available on our website to view as a video. Tonight, we'll take you through a day in the life of a Cranbrook graduate student. We'll show you beautiful shots of our campus, facilities, and campus. We'll show you our studios, and we'll also take a step even closer into critiques, workshops, installations, and the individual conversations that happen as a key component to our program. We will also show you what life is like off campus, great places to visit in Detroit, our incredible cultural institutions, and the cohort of alumni, and more. You may remember from our last webinar that we described Cranbrook as having no formal curricular structure. Tonight's presentation will show you what this model allows, and we, will, we think it will help you understand why it's an excellent approach to graduate study by seeing what a day looks like for our students. To do this, we'll start with an overall, overall view, a view from the sky. This is our campus situated on 300 acres just north of Detroit. We have walking trails, lakes, sculptures, and fountains hidden in the woods. We have sunny fall days and cold winter evenings. The campus is also a site on the National Historic Registry, designed by renowned Finnish architect Eliel Saarinen in the 1930s as a community for education, art, and design. So think beautiful art retreat. And in case you like your sense of space represented graphically, and I know some of you do, here's a map of the Art Academy to give you the whole picture in black and white. So let's start a typical day. For many of our students, it starts on campus in our dorm. Living on campus makes life easy, and the studio is close at hand. For the students in our dorms and the students coming in from off campus, morning moves to the studio. Studios in the morning are quiet and focused. There is space to reflect on the day ahead, catching up on readings, researching, or taking a few moments before everyone else arrives, and getting a chance to reflect on where you left off the night before or work on last minute details for the studio visit later in the day. All of our departments have kitchens adjacent to the studios, so they become a place to meet with your peers and join together for meals and collaboration. Sharing a meal and a conversation can spark next projects or get you over a stumbling block. With kitchens and relaxing spaces right nearby, movement between working life and social life is seamless, flowing from studio time to dinner conversation and back again. We've mentioned that Cranbrook is different than other graduate programs, and you know by now that we have no fixed classes or conventional grades, that we are a studio-based and community-driven. Working in an academy with only graduate students has its benefit, and one is the direct relationship with your artist in residence. One-on-one -on -one meetings with your primary mentor is central to the academy. With the mentor artist in residence model, you are not spending your time in seminars taught by adjunct faculty, and you aren't fighting with undergraduates for time with your advisor. The artist in residence at Cranbrook are with you every day. 
They roam the department in early mornings to see what's on your studio walls. They hold regular studio visits and desk crits with you. These visits are rich and lasting conversations about your work. They're frequent enough to keep you going, but they don't happen too often to get in the way of your making. The artists and residents provide an invaluable resource, and they are truly part of the working community with you. When you need inspiration for your work or need to prepare for a discussion you, you might lead in a studio seminar, there are resources. Our library is a remarkable source of visual and written material on every subject offered at the Academy and far beyond. With deep collections in the area of art, design, and architecture, our library offers a quiet spot away from the studios for clear thinking, quiet conversation, and incredible access. We know that research isn't only done in books. Our museum's collection vault is open to students to access, so a break in the day might bring a trip to the open storage collection to view furniture by Charles Eames, Harry Bertoya, or these two, both by Eliel Sarnin and the history of chairs behind them. Or it might mean a visit to a sampling from the history of textiles, from Loya Sarnin to re recent U.S. Fellowship recipient Ann Wilson. Then it's back to work in the studio. Having an open curriculum allows students to work, 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 because ideas and progress need time to develop, and that can't happen in six, three-hour blocks. Sometimes work spills out of the stu private studios and into shared space. Hallways become installation sites for working big. Friends help you carry your boat to the museum. Space is well lit. And there is space and carts to move. There is room to work weird and to take over the crit room to get set up for critique. Some days are critique days. Students gather with artists and residents to do just that, critique and discuss work. The room awaits. Cranbrook crits are rigorous and graduate level. In this, they ask all participants to engage and question the work. The critique styles vary. Crits can take most of the day, as we typically discuss several students in each round. This challenging conversation can sometimes be framed around written reviews. It can start with questions and observations, or it can be a guided free-for-all discussion on the work. With everyone pulling their weight to generate a substantial review, this conversation gives students the ability to think on behalf of someone else. And it may be part of why so many Cranbrook graduates go on to leadership roles in both making and teaching. Critiques are also one of the ways that visitors engage. Outside artists and designers join the conversation to lend new perspectives and new observations, sometimes on a picnic blanket outside. After critiques, students tend to need to take a break. Thinking and looking is hard work. So they set aside time to quiet their mind. It might be a walk through the garden, in the woods on campus, or a swim in the natatorium. Simply walking down Academy Way can clear your mind. Our curriculum is structured so that study is largely self-driven, which means there is time in the day to reflect. And when the break is over, and while the ideas are fresh, it can be the best time to return to the studio and get back to making. We'll scroll through some of the images of students in their private studios so you can get a sense of working life in the department. Here are a few students having a conversation in a fiber studio. Another shot of a fiber student space. Here, a private studio in the ceramic department. And a more open space in our architecture department. Young woman working in a painting studio. And in our sculpture critique space. A 2D design studio. And one more in architecture. When it is not a critique day, it may be a day for a critical studies seminar. Held on occasional afternoons over the semester, this program gives students an opportunity to engage with thinkers from fields outside of studio practice. 
or seminars right in the museum collection. This one initiated by the print media department. When you're not in the studio, there is so much more to do. You might be spending time with your work-study job. Most students take jobs on campus, not only to earn a little extra money, but to learn skills that can help lead to jobs after Cranbrook. So here, someone working in the library or helping to install an exhibition in the museum's gallery, or even working with your artisan residents to install her solo exhibition at the museum. We love having our students work alongside us. It is another example of the seamlessness of the community. In the evenings, our students attend a wide variety of lectures in our museum's auditorium. Each year, there are 30 to 40 lecturers, easily one a week, if not more. Speakers who are artists and designers, critics and curators, culture workers, and leading thinkers from all over the world. These are meant to offset and to add the conversation happening within the department. Sometimes it's a superstar architect, sometimes it's an emerging artist, all of them speaking from the same podium and directly to you. If you are in the area, living in Michigan, or visiting us, we invite you to join us for a lecture. All of our lectures are open. After the lecture, you might be joining an opening in our student-run gallery. The changing shows every week, the Forum Gallery gives students a chance to see what your peers are up to and make connections to others who may be working in similar ways. Shows are way, our way to collaborate and engage with a wider cross-section of the community. The Forum Gallery also gives you space to test out ideas with an audience on a performance or large installation, and naturally it's social and a frequent site of cross-departmental exchange. Cranbrook is a 24-7 community. As you've seen, there's something for the early risers and the late night time for those who want to go until the sun comes up. And while you may have a full day of discussions, crits, and presentations, you also have wide open nights for working. So let's talk about Detroit. Just 30 minutes south of our campus is Detroit, Michigan. Many of you have read about our city and the transformation it has undergone in the last few years. The city has cultural staples that are long-standing favorites to visit and to use as resources while in graduate school, as well as new additions that bring a fresh conversation. Many of our alumni are choosing to stay in the city where the rent is low and the opportunities to make your own path are endless. The Detroit Institute of Arts has one of the most significant collections in this country. The DIA has been a resource for inspiration with exciting exhibitions, programs, and films. Here, one of several panels of the Detroit Industry Fresco painted by Diego Rivera when he and his wife, Frida Kahlo, lived in Detroit. What once was an auto dealership is now the Museum of Contemporary Art Detroit. This museum brings exhibitions from internationally known contemporary artists and designers to the city providing a counterpoint to the encyclopedic collection of the DIA. Alongside incredible museum, Detroit also boasts unique and long-running cultural projects like the African Bead Museum, a space for sculpture, community classes, and a showcase of African artifacts and exhibitions. And the Heidelberg Project by Tyree Guyton, using sound objects to transform a small neighborhood into a constantly evolving work of art. In Detroit, the abundance of space means collaborative working and making happens everywhere. Pony Ride is one such operation. It offers inexpensive production space for small businesses. Metalsmiths, designers, letterpress studios, and more take up residence and have a supportive community of practitioners right next door. And enterprises like this are happening all over the city. Detroit is also home to other art venues with a range of commercial galleries and project spaces. With ample opportunity to show your work, current graduate students are engaging in the art community of Detroit and using it as a launching pad to new work and next steps. And sometimes even our very own faculty, such as this recent show of Heather McGill, Mark Newport, and Iris Eichenberg at the Simone de Souza Gallery. When you aren't on a gallery crawl or dining at one of the new restaurants in town, there's so much more to explore. Eastern Market is a year-round farmer's market that has been in the city of Detroit since the 1840s. 
The market has fresh produce, live music, flowers, and is intended by over 45,000 people every Saturday. And after you pick up some fresh produce from the market, you can head to Belle Isle, a 1,000-acre island park on the Detroit River. Belle Isle is home to a conservatory, aquarium, walking trails, and beaches to spend the afternoon. And Detroit is an architectural gem. Even our aquariums are designed by the greats, like the Belle Isle Aquarium designed by Albert Kahn with iridescent poabic tile. And we can't help ourselves. We love Detroit's buildings, so we'll list just a few others. Here, Albert Kahn's Fisher Building. And one more view of that incredible interior. Mies van der Rohe's renowned Lafayette Park, Yamasaki's One Woodward Avenue, and Detroit, of course, would not be complete without the historic Fox Theater. And we are excited to have more of our alumni choose to stay in the area after graduating. Local alumni are teaching, starting independent studios, curating, writing, and contributing to the art and design in the city. You will see them at openings and events, visiting your studio and inviting you to theirs. The large network of alumni makes Cranbrook special. And while having so many close at home provides an inside look at what your postgraduate life may hold. So while we've described a place of freedom to explore and to work with no fixed schedule, We've also described days with plenty to do, plenty to challenge you, all in a thriving community that is seamless between living and working. We've returned now to Ron Hemphill's Sparkler video, and we'll let this play for a moment while we invite your questions. We've um, told you a lot, but there may be things that we haven't mentioned that you'd like to ask. If you're listening to us live, you should see a dialog box on your screen a Q&A dialog box, feel free to type questions to us and we'll answer them as they come in. We see um, one question coming in asking us, is there time to work in other departments? And the answer is yes, absolutely. Uh, there is a strong departmental affiliation for all students and so you do have a strong attachment to your home department, but you can work in other departments both informally and formally. Informally, you can attend crits, you can attend reading groups, you can stop by and see your friends, you can talk to the DAs about using the equipment. And formally, you can do an elective with another department, meaning you'll make a commitment to attend all of their crits, all of their reading groups, and become a uh, full participant in an elective department. We have a question coming in about the reputation of crime in the Detroit inner city, has the city been gentrified like what we saw in the slideshow that we showed? Well, it's a very good question, and um, I think there would be a hundred answers to this question because Detroit, like many cities, is really a strong collection of neighborhoods. So there are some neighborhoods that are seeing an uptick in the economy, in the residents, in the um, cultural sites, in restaurants, etc. There are other um, neighborhoods in the city that are still under quite a great deal of stress um, and are struggling to refine themselves after the economic downturn and after a long history of struggle in Detroit. So Detroit is really a story of um, all kinds of neighborhoods, all kinds of community, and it would be a city that I would really invite you to spend some time learning about if you were thinking about graduate school here. We have a question coming in asking about the proportion of, say, younger students to older students. Um, in general, our average age is around 27 years old. We always have a few students that are a bit younger than that, and we have quite a few that are a bit older. With our program and the way that we're structured, we do tend to see students that are a little bit older coming in. It tends to be a good fit for someone that's had a bit of a career, worked outside a bit, and had chance to develop their studio practice on their own. Um, but again, the average age is about 27, 28 for the students. We also have a question coming in, what's the square footage um, of painting studios? Uh, and I'll answer this not just for painting, but for all studios across the academy. We're 150 students, 
every single student is given um, a private uh, solo studio space. And those range anywhere from about 8 feet to 8 by 8 feet to about 10 by 10. So you could be 64 square um, square feet, 100 square feet. Architecture tends to use their space a little differently because they want to have private um, bench space and working space, planning space, and then big open building space. Um, but other than that, the, um, that's the story on the private studios. We also have a question about the security of the studios. Um, uh, all of our departments are locked except for the members of that department. So you have um, access 24-7 to your studio, to your studio building. During the um, working day, and I think that's from about 8 in the morning till about 9 at night, we do leave the studios open in some cases um, where there is shared space, student gallery, wood shop, et cetera. Um, but we enjoy an incredible um, measure of safety at the academy, um, and if you visit us, you would really get that sense. It's worthwhile to note, too, with the size of the studios, the question before on how large the studios are, that we are on, as Sarah mentioned before, about 300 acres. And many, many students do projects outdoors. Um, we do have a great system of working with some of our staff here to help you find space um, on campus, outside, to set up shop, to work, and use this space. So that's one of the really special things about Cranbrook, because we have so much beautiful land around us, we can really extend the studio out to all the areas around us. We have a question asking if there's a concentration at the academy working in video and film production. There is not. Um, we have a photography department that has a concentration in what she is calling these days Lisco and lens-based work, and we certainly have students who are working in video and film. We have that happening across the the uh, academy, but we do not have a department that is specific to video or film production. Um, we're being asked when the application deadline is. The application deadline is February 1st. You will apply online uh, through our a slide room portal, and you'll find an extensive list of tips and how-tos and the nuances of slide room on our website, so you can read through that as you get prepared. We also have a question about um, where students live. Um, someone noticed that we mentioned about half of our students live on campus and about half live off. And the students who live off campus live in the surrounding area, in Royal Oak or Ferndale or Pontiac, probably not typically as far as Detroit because it makes it's about a 20-mile commute. Um, one of the benefits of attending graduate school in Southeast Michigan is that Southeast Michigan is remarkably affordable. So um, students find a very co low cost of living off campus uh, nearby. We are often asked, and we love to remind everyone, that it is a good idea to have a car while at Cranbrook. Many students coming from a, with excellent tr public transportation often ask us if a car is important. It absolutely is, especially as we mentioned before, if you would like to explore the city or the surrounding areas, there are literally thousands of lakes in Michigan and beautiful hiking trails. Um, so a lot of other stuff to do in the area as well. But as far as going to the grocery store, picking up supplies, heading to Home Depot, you absolutely do need a car. Um, many students are coming in and working together, carpooling and that kind of thing, but we do recommend having a vehicle in this area. Someone's asking a little bit more about working studio spaces. How are they located and how are they distributed? So the studios are located within the department. So 15 studios in metals, 15 studios in ceramics, 15 in 2D. So if you were a print media student, you would have your private studio located within the print media department. Um, all of the departments just do a studio lottery a little bit differently. So um, students do get to pick their studios as a group, but I believe it's done sort of by lottery, and I, I can't quite say exactly how that works out across departments. Um, we've been asked about residential options. Um, what are the costs of typical rents around Cranbrook? I want to turn to Tricia because she lives nearby and is a not so long ago graduate. There are a number of different places um, for uh, alternative residential options in the area. A number of different students tend to live in neighborhoods called Ferndale or Berkeley or Pontiac. 
you can get a pretty large size house with two or three bedrooms that often students will split. Um, in Ferndale, you can get a three bedroom house split between three people for about three, $300 a month plus utilities. Um, in Pontiac, it is a little bit cheaper in some areas. Um, so, you know, 250 to 300, 400 on the high end. And then single spaces, one bedroom apartments, they tend to be a little more rare um, and they will be up in the 600, 700s, depending on where you're living. Uh, we do really welcome students to work together, to do housing together. It makes it very easy. It's great to live with other students who are in Cranbrook at the same time. It's great to live off campus um, as well as on, so both are really good options. And we'd always be happy to talk about that more as you continue on through the application process. We're being asked about equipment, and the answer is yes. We do have a CNC milling machine. We do have 3D printers. We do have multiple laser cutters. We do have a um, large digital vacuum former. Um, we have a central media lab that offers uh, more advanced and sophisticated software. We have um, sound stages and um, areas for recording sound for video or doing post uh, sound production. Um, we're also being asked if our Master's of Architecture program is NAAB accredited. It is not. Our Master's of Architecture program is accredited in, insofar as Cranbrook Academy of Art is an accredited um, school. However, it is not a professionally accredited program. So that's something um, for you to know. And that's not a route we would take. It wouldn't um, fit with uh, the philosophy of our department. So those are all of the questions that we have seen coming in. Thank you to everyone for tuning in tonight. It's a pleasure to get to tell you about the Academy and to take your very good questions. And we just wanted to invite you as well to our next and last webinar of the season, the application and beyond on Monday, January 18th at 3 p.m. And please don't hesitate to call us or email. All of our information is on our website, and you'll be directed there after the end of the webinar. So please take advantage if you have more questions. We'll also be following up with an email after this webinar, so feel free to reply to that and ask anything that we didn't get answered or you thought of afterwards. Thank you again for spending your afternoon with us. We hope to see your applications soon, and have a great night.